All right. Well, it is 10 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. So good morning. My name is Laura Gazette, and I am currently serving as the 2022-23 Research and Development Chair for the Junior League of Dallas. Um, I also have the honor as serving as the incoming Community Vice President for the 23-24 Junior Le League year. Um, I'm so excited to have you all with us today to learn more about the Junior League of Dallas and the opportunities we have to partner together. Please note that we are recording this presentation and it will be available to you on the Junior League website after the presentation is done so that you can reference it later. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Christina Eubanks, our current president-elect and incoming 23-24 president to kick us off. Thank you, Laura. Um, I just wanted to say a quick welcome. Um, again, I'm Christina Eubanks and I do absolutely have the pleasure of being um, the incoming president for the Junior League of Dallas. And we're so excited for the next year to come. We have some exciting new programs, which I think we're gonna walk through today. Um, and really just trying to reshape how we're thinking about our impact in the community. And so we are excited for you guys to learn about the some of the new programs and the, the ways that we're trying to be nimble um, as we enter our 102nd year of the league. Um, and so really I invite you guys to, um, you know, really be interactive. We have um, ask questions, there's new things. And so as with new processes, it always comes a little, a few more questions, but really excited for you all to be here and to welcome you and really get ready to kick off the 23, 24 year. So with that, I will turn it back over to Laura. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. So today we're going to spend a little bit of time um, sharing who we are and the impact that we um, have had and currently have in the community. Then we'll move into our uh, grant opportunities. Um, and then we'll set aside, set, uh, set aside some time at the end of the presentation for some Q&A. So with that, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to enter them into the chat at any time. Um, at the end of the presentation, we will address those questions for you. So it's important to understand that the Junior League fiscal year runs from June 1st to May 31st. So as such, our um, leadership team turns over on June 1st, but our incoming team is busy prepping for the upcoming year way before that. So today we have representation from both our outgoing incoming and incoming teams to go over all of our various opportunities and to help answer any questions that you may have. So who is the Junior League of Dallas? I think our mission statement sums it up pretty perfectly. The Junior League of Dallas is an organization of women committed to promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, and improving the community through the effective action and leadership of trained volunteers. So for those of you who are familiar with the Junior League of Dallas, you may recall that we previously grouped our community program into six focus areas, which we called our six issue areas. We recently consolidated our areas of focus into three impact areas. So those areas are education in the arts, health and wellness, and strengthening families. To tie into that, we are very proud of the impact that the Junior League of Dallas has had in the community. For the upcoming year, our nearly 4,000 volunteers will contribute more than 90,000 uncompensated hours to 28 community projects, three signature projects, three emerging projects, six league initiated projects, and various other projects and committees of the Junior League of Dallas. We also raise and give approximately a million dollars back to the community every year. The training our members receive also extends outside of the Junior League. Our members serve on more than 50 boards and community coalitions and have also helped form several nonprofits since the Junior League was formed over 100 years ago. 
Now let's move into the various programs and grant opportunities we offer to partner with the community. As a reminder, we are recording this session, so you don't have to be writing everything down. This will be available for you on our website afterwards. Also, don't forget that if you have any questions, please feel free to enter those into the chat and we will address them at the end of the session. And with that, I will turn it over to Emily Ronk, our current Kids in the Kitchen Chair and incoming Signature Project Vice President. Thank you, Laura. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining. I am so excited to talk to you about Kids in the Kitchen. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So the Kids in the Kitchen program is sponsored by United Healthcare. Similar to the United mission of helping people live healthier lives, the mission of Kids in the Kitchen is to empower youth to make healthy lifestyle choices and reverse the trend of childhood obesity and its associated health issues. The Kids in the Kitchen program is structured around the Dallas youth, focusing on elementary through early middle school age children. This year's participants range from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. Prior to the pandemic, Kids in the Kitchen was an eight week curriculum. However, the last few years, we did have to consolidate that into five. Um, however, though, participants and agencies will still receive all of the nutrition information, healthy recipe cards, fitness activities, and other activities as part of the curriculum. In January, we held our annual Train the Trainer event with representation from each of our participating agencies. It was so great to have everybody on site. Um, each agency received a box full of supplies to successfully complete the program. Some of these supplies were toaster ovens, medicine balls, dry goods, as well as some gift cards to purchase any perishable items to go along with the curriculum. Um, next slide, please, Laura. Okay, so we do have an application for Kids in the Kitchen that will be available on the Junior League website. The application can be found under the Community Services tab and then under the Kids in the Kitchen page. You will also be able to see um, some of the curriculum from this year. We've got examples up on that um, page, so you can take a look at them as you please. I highly encourage you all to do that. Um, we really changed the curriculum this year. It was part of the initiative of the committee, so we are very excited for its launch this year. Um, we did extend our application deadline for this upcoming year. So Monday, July 17th at 5 p.m. will be the deadline for our application. We will be sending reminders, however, um, up until then, and highly encourage everyone to apply. Um, the program is going to be great next year, and we are excited to have everyone on board. And with that, I will pass it along to Danielle Williams. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. I am the current chairman of the Community Outreach Committee. Next slide. Junior League of Dallas offers a community assistance fund to provide emergency funding to, for unplanned short-term needs. That means if you run into uh, water damage or um, electrical work or plumbing work, anything of that nature that was not planned. And if you were to use your ordinary budget, it would disrupt potentially your programming. You can apply with us for up to $5,000. Next slide. The purpose of these agencies that we're providing emergency funding is you have to provide a critical human need to the community. The league year, as mentioned before, is June 1st through May 31st. We are accepting applications all year round. And again, it's a maximum of $5,000. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Next, you will hear from our Done in a Day Chairman, Heather Loach. Thanks so much, Danielle. I appreciate it. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm thrilled to see so many faces uh, and names rather that I recognize. Um, but thank you, obviously, for all the work that you do in the community. And thanks for 
and to partnering with the Junior League of Dallas. Um, I'm currently serving on our board this year as our membership vice president. So right now I've been really focused on supporting our members and recruiting new ones with the hope of building the ranks um, of our trained volunteers. Um, but I've been humbled to be selected as our done in a day chair for next year. Next slide, Laura. So done in a day as a format um, is actually uh, something that a number of other junior leagues across the country leverage. And as I understand it, the Junior League of Dallas had something like this similar at some point in the past. Um, but as Christina mentioned earlier, we're really anxious to plug in and help agencies with some of the more immediate needs that they have so that, as she mentioned, we can be a little bit more nimble and done in a day is a great example of that. So this is essentially an opportunity for you to work with us on a short term basis um, on sort of a pro concentrated project. It could be in the form of, of an event or it could be in the form of a particular project or task that you need support in completing. Um, and so that's actually the way in which we'd love to partner with you. Next slide. So just to give you an idea of sort of the parameters around this opportunity, uh, you need to be a nonprofit that serves the residents of Dallas County, which I imagine most, or if not all of you are. Um, this would be an opportunity for our volunteers to come and join you generally on site, where we'd be completing a, a period of time of somewhere between four and six hours a day. Um, and again, it would be generally kind of a one-time opportunity for us to partner with you. Um, generally speaking, we're looking for a scenario in which you're looking for 10 or fewer volunteers um, and understand too that we are here and there and available to help support essentially the manpower or the talent. Um, but this would be a scenario where from a, a financial standpoint, you would be fully funding the project that you need assistance with. Um, understand that again, because we are just reintroducing this format, um, these are the parameters that, that we've set forth as guidelines. If you have a project or have something that you need our support with that perhaps falls slightly in without outside of the, these um, you know these parameters, I would definitely encourage you to apply. Um, again, we're anxious to meet all of the unmet needs of Dallas. Um, and you know again, we will absolutely consider your application and hope that um, we can find a way to make it work. Now, given that the nature of our project is a little bit more hands-on and it's a little bit more one-time in nature, we have essentially a deadlines um, for the opportunity to partner with us in this capacity that correspond to the date on which we'd be working with you. So as an example, we're, we've broken it down essentially into quarters. And so for our fall cycle, we're gonna be accepting applications that are opening starting now, and we'll be able to accept applications through June 30th for a scenario in which you would like to partner with us during the month of September. October, November, and so on throughout the rest of the calendar year. So just keep that in mind. Again, um, you know, we want to have an opportunity to work with you. We do need a little bit of an opportunity to review and vet the opportunity and make sure that we most importantly have recruited um, the volunteers that we need to support this effort. Um, but we just want to make sure um, that we've got just a little bit of lead time, but understand, especially too, if you have a project that isn't as time sensitive and you're able to apply and you want to work with us now or you want us to work with us another time, just let us know and obviously apply accordingly within these windows. So really, really, really looking forward to hearing from a number of you, really excited about this new opportunity to partner with you in a little bit of a different way. Um, and we're really excited um, about the prospect of obviously helping you with your needs and also the opportunity to partner with existing agencies that we're currently working with, as well as new ones that we haven't necessarily had a chance to work with. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the fabulous Laura Gazette. <laughs> thank you, Heather, and thank you all for sharing the various opportunities. Um, so now I'm going to move into giving you a little bit of information about our community program. Um, what exactly is it, how the process works, and how what is required for you to apply. Um, so once we kind of go through that, I will finish up to, by showing you actually how you would go into our website and apply for that program. It's a little bit different this year. It's easier, so that's great for those of you who have applied in the past. Um, so with that, we will get right to it. So we do partner with our community program agencies for a minimum of a year. So because of that, um, we do have a pretty extensive research and development process. So we have a committee of over 50 ladies that meet over the summer um, and actually into the early fall to review the applicants and build our community program for the upcoming year. So as you can see here, we start with an initial review process. So that committee is actually formed by incoming and outgoing leadership. Once that is complete, 
uh, applications that uh, get past the initial review process will move into subcommittee. And during our subcommittee process, there is a qualitative review that is done by our researchers, as well as a financial review, which is done by a financial committee that is done concurrently. Once that process is complete, we move into full committee. And during full committee, um, the committee works to vet out all of the various opportunities that have gotten that far. And at the end of full committee, we actually will have at that point in time, our community program for the next year. Um, so then it goes through a series of votes. It is voted on by our board of directors, our leadership council, and finally our general membership. For this year, that vote will occur in January. So we will know um, in January who our community program partners will be for the 24-25 year. So what's required uh, to be to apply to be a, a community program partner of the General League of Dallas? So of course we have our grant application, um, which is a standard application of who you are, um, what is the impact you've had on the community, and what are you looking for from the Junior League of Dallas? Um, to go along with the impact you've had on the community, we also have a community impact report that we will ask you to complete, uh, and we will get uh, into a little bit more detail on that on the next slide. So we do have some additional supporting documents that are required that are listed here. Um, your 501c3 letter, list of your current officers and board of directors, certificate of insurance, your audited financial statements for the past three years that we use for that financial review process that I just went over, um, your current annual budget, prior year actual revenues and expenses compared to the prior year budget, your most recently internally prepared financial statements if applicable, and then if you have any um, special financial circumstances that you would like to, the committee to know about, you may also provide a separate statement explaining those. So we do have a community impact report. I've got a snapshot to show you what that looks like when we get into the actual application process. Um, but there is outcomes reporting, uh, which basically measures the outcomes for our supported agencies. It gives us an idea of how you are impacting the community. And there's also a section that shows how through the junior league participation, you've also been able to help um, um, help the community even further. So that's really important for us for our internal reporting and also the, how we can share both internally and externally um, how you guys and us partner together to actually really um, affect the community. So a few success stories that um, we have been able to share through this community impact reporting is one at our friend's place. 84% um, of program participants reported improved coping skills to allow them to complete tasks, and 87% increased the amount in their savings accounts. And then at Genesis Women's Shelter, 49% of its clients who received counseling report reduced PTSD symptoms by the time they leave the shelter. So what are we looking for in our community program partners? So it is important to note that the majority of our members do have full-time jobs outside the home. So placements with weekend or evening opportunities typically do work better for our membership. We are looking for well-defined placements that we can share with our members that gives them a very clear idea of what that volunteer opportunity looks like and how they can get their um, 60 hours. Uh, multiple opportunities for members to earn hours. So um, it's, it's, we know that um, there, every single opportunity you offer, our volunteers may not be able to make that, right? Because of just life outside of the junior league. So we do look for multiple ways that our volunteers can earn their 60 hour requirement throughout the year. It's also important to note that the placement opportunity cannot involve fundraising activities. Um, our volunteers are not allowed to exchange funds or solicit funds for um, our, our community partner agencies. 
And then there does need to be a substantive board of directors or advisory council position to serve as a training opportunity for our project chair. That is a requirement for our community program partners. And then some of the most common reasons that I've seen for release, um, this is probably the biggest one, is it's just difficult for volunteers to earn enough hours. So there is a 60 hour requirement um, that is an annual requirement. So that would run June 1st through May 31st of the following year. Um, so there does need to be ample opportunities for our volunteers to earn enough hours. Um, if for some reason there are, our financial review committee has reviewed um, and has deemed the financials to be unstable, that may um, be a reason for release. If it's unclear where the volunteer opportunity will actually take place, um, it is important that we know where our volunteers are going to be. The agency is not a fit within one of our three impact areas of focus or if the agency fails to fully complete the application, which does include the community impact report and uploading the supporting documents that are required. So a few other things to note, um, agency requests must be for 10 or more volunteers. That does not include the project chair. So including the project chair, the total number of requested volunteers has to be at least 11. Uh, we do not uh, send, uh, give money to our community programs partners without sending volunteers. So you can request volunteers only, uh, but you cannot request funding only. They must come, it must come with volunteers as well. Our volunteers cannot be involved in any fundraising, medical research, political, and or religious activities. You can be a religious-based uh, organization. You just cannot have our volunteers actually involved with the religious activities. Um, there must be a, a ex officio seat on the agency's board um, or their advisory council for our project chair. And then agencies must hold an orientation and training session before any volunteers begin their placements. And our project chairs do help facilitate that for you. So I think this is probably the biggest question. How do I apply and when is my application due? Um, so the deadline for our applications this year will be June 6th, 2023. So that is a Tuesday at 5 p.m. Um, you will notice we actually bumped our deadline back a couple of months this year. Um, and, and that's because we wanted to give you guys a little bit of breathing room. So our process really ends really in February with our grants presentation and our community volunteer fair. Um, so we're moving that back a little bit so that it's a little bit closer to when you would actually be receiving the grant and to give you a little space between the end of the prior cycle. Um, to begin the application process, you will go to our website at jldallas.org, click on community at the top, and then community project requests. And applications must be submitted online. We will not accept any hard copies. So we're going to quickly go over um, how to, a very high level overview of how to uh, complete and submit your application. So you will go to jldallas.org, and at the top, you'll, you will see the Community Service tab. So click the Community Service tab, and then you're going to click Request Support from JLD. Over on the left-hand side, um, you will see the various different uh, project requests. So you can go to the Community Program Project Request, Done in a Day and the emergency funding request, this process is going to be very similar for all three of those. So today we're going to go over the community program project request, but just keep in mind if you do want to apply um, for emergency funding or for a done in a day project, it, the process is the same. So you are going to go to the um, applicable webpage. So on this one, it would be a community program request. And on it, there will be a link to download the community grant application. So you will download it and complete it. 
and then please save it in PDF format to upload it. So here is a quick snapshot of what that application looks like once you download it. It will download in Word document format so that you can complete it. But again, please save it in PDF format before uploading. So then you're going to come back to this page and you're going to download the Community Impact Self-Evaluation form. So just like the application, you're going to complete that and you're going to save it in PDF format to upload it back onto the website. And here is what that looks like. It will download in Excel format. You will complete it, save it as PDF, and upload it back onto the website. So once you've completed all those, just like we've just discussed, you're going to return to the website. You're going to go down here to upload your applications and documents. And then this is going to pop up. So you're going to put your agency name here at the top, and then you will upload each of the documents that are required. And then at the bottom, there is a button to click submit and you are done. You have applied for the community program. And again, this is gonna be very similar for the done in a day request and the emergency funding request. Um, for people who have applied in the past, you know, you used to have to log in and you had a separate portal you had to go through. You no longer have to do that. So this is a much easier process for you guys. So once you have submitted your application, the applicable JLD teams will review your application and they will reach out to you if they have any questions or need any additional information. Um, we do not have a anywhere where we track the status of the application on the website, um, but if you do have specific questions about your agency's uh, submission status, you can reach out to Christy and Hincamp um, at khencamp at jldallas.org, and she would be happy to give you an update or answer any specific application questions. How do I upload um, any system questions that you have? All right. So with that, we will move into our Q&A session. All right. So Emily, um, will the slide deck be shared too? We probably will not actually send out the slide deck, but we will have the presentation available on the website. Um, and then do fundraising events qualify for the done in a day project? So Heather, can you answer that one for us? Yep, I sure can if I pull myself off mute. Yes, my understanding is the answer is yes, but let me know if you have any reason to believe that is not the case. So, so I can clarify that. They can help at a fundraiser. So an example would be a fun run and you need help with people passing out water bottles. Our volunteers can do that. Um, they cannot raise funds. So they cannot solicit funds. They cannot handle money. All right, next question. Do y'all have a preference regarding the type of done in a day project? So this could be physical and manual labor, labor versus sedentary activities. Great question. Honestly, very honestly, again, especially since we're just reintroducing this project concept, we're very open to whatever, uh, whatever way in which we can best serve your needs. So um, the, a high level, the answer is no, for sure. All right. Um, can an agency apply for community program and done in a day? And if so, must the volunteer needs be different projects? Um, so yes, they absolutely can apply for the community program and done in a day. Um, the volunteer needs should be different projects because that's a, for us, it's a different set of volunteers. So we want to make sure that our, our volunteers that are actually in that community placement are the ones that are being, um, have the full opportunity to get those hours in that one project. However, I would say that if you have a, um, a need for more volunteers, um, it is possibly something we can consider. So 
if you have any questions, we'd be happy to, to discuss that offline. Um, and you can email um, community at jld.org and or at jldallas.org. I'm so sorry. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions and dig further into that for you. All right. Can we apply for multiple grant tops in one fund grant types in one funding year? R and D and done in a day, for example. Absolutely, you can. Will I three clarify? Years... I just wanted to clarify that there's no actual grant like funding in done in a day. It's only volunteers. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Christina. Um, Christina, um, I'm actually going to let you answer this because it's a finance question. I don't know the answer. Will three years of 990 suffice or are three years audited financials required? If you don't have audited financials, let's just talk about that um, offline. Um, typically, but not all, not every agency does do audited financials. And so we can just have that. We just need to know, know that. Excuse me, Laura, if we can hop back to the other question, the emergency funding, you can only request once per year. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Danielle. That's the emergency grant up to $5,000. You can only apply once per year. Yep, thank you. Okay, so do we have a pro? so it's not exactly grant related, but do we have a program that offers financial or literacy education for the community? Um, and if so, is the con who is the contact for that? Um, we don't have one that is run by the Junior League of Dallas. However, we do partner with several agencies in the community that do offer um, financial or literacy education to members of the community. So not one that's owned by the Junior League, but we do partner with agencies and our volunteers are involved in that. Okay, um, question about community report and the success stories question. I don't know what the question is. Um, so we will come back to that or we can take that offline. Okay, what about the JLD provisional project? So as a part of our transition into done in a day, we are no longer going to be offering junior league provisional projects and transfer projects. So um, if you have a need that would historically have fit in a provisional project or a transfer project, please apply for the done in a day project. So that is where um, we will be handling any of those types of requests um, is in done in a day. Yes, please, please, please apply. I'm actually a former transfer chair myself, so I'm familiar with the transfer project selection process as well. So please, please, please do. We'd love to have the opportunity to partner with you. And I'll just say, again, as we um, are moving into, we, we have a new strategic plan. And so again, part of that is how are we are redefining um, our impact in the community, but also our members' experience. And so we thought it would be best for our provisionals, our you know, very new members, um, to get as connected into the community as possible. And so one of the changes that we're making, so we're not having that provisional project anymore, is that those members will go immediately into community placement um, in the in the in the winter, or I guess it's spring, um, the spring time frame. So that's the reason we're no longer providing that, but we are trying to offset that with done in a day. Um, can you speak to the timeline for decision making? Will there be agency interviews? So for the community program, yes, we are still continuing to do our site visits. So um, our researchers will be conducting uh, site visits in the summertime. And the decision will be communicated in January after the um, after the general membership vote is complete. And then as for done in a day, that'll be a much quicker turnaround. So um, so and I don't know, Heather, do you want to speak to can you speak to done in a day? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy so, so to. So just to give you a kind of a sense of the timing, 
At the completion of each of those quarters application periods, so if we look at the first one, the one that concludes on June 30th, we'll be reviewing the applications and then we'll be meeting with the selection committee. Generally speaking, that meeting will happen by about the middle of the following month. So we'll have a couple of weeks to review your materials, ask any follow up questions that we might have or request anything else that we need to know. And then we'll go ahead into the committee and then we will certainly alert you as to what our decision is immediately thereafter. So I would anticipate probably by um, I would say the hopefully with any luck, the 20, 20th or the 21st of the following month. So as an example, in this next application period, July 20th or 21st, we would hope to get back to you with an answer so that you know either way. Thank you. All right. Do you require financials for done in a day projects? No, we are not currently requiring audited financials for done in a day. And done in a day is replacing the provisional project. So just to be clear, we will not be offering provisional and transfer projects this year. Um, done in a day is replacing both of those. Although one thing just to clarify on that, it will be a different group of volunteers in the sense that when you were working with provisionals for their provisional projects and you were working with transfers, the transfer projects, this is actually a group of women who have expressed interest in doing their placement in this format, in this sort of, you know, one shot at a time, doing different projects and having the opportunity to partner with different agencies. Um, so there are currently a total of 10 women who've signed up for this in particular. And just from a logistical perspective, let me mention that again, in the event that you have a, a project that needs up to 10 individuals, or as I said, even if it's 11 or 12, certainly let us know. We'll make every effort to accommodate. We do have a plan in place to address the fact that certainly of these 10 women, not every single person might be able to attend on a given day, um, but we do have a plan in place to address that to make sure that we can meet your volunteer needs. Okay, so we've got a request. Can I dig in a little bit more into the religious activities for volunteers? Um, so in this example, um, so when we need help passing out bags to the homeless um, and need volunteers, they also have a widow's program. So you can be a religious-based organization and, um, and apply for any of our grants. Um, we partner with organizations that are religious-based uh, programs. Uh, they just can't be involved in the actual religious activities. So conducting a Bible study or praying with people, that would be examples of stuff that our volunteers could not be involved in. But if you are a religious-based organization, um, then that is, you are not disqualified from applying. And then yes, so students, we had a question, are volunteers able to work directly with students? Absolutely. Um, so, okay, so some additional clarification regarding the um, community impact uh, report question. In the examples provided, both listed were short sentences and outcomes and the prompted ask for stories or photos. Do you prefer a success story, like about a volunteer interaction with a patient um, or an outcome representing change because of the funding and support provided by JLD? Ooh, okay, great question. Um, can I answer be both? So <laughs> we love the stats. The stats help us because that's a true uh, measure of the impact that we have, but we want to hear your stories. So please, if you have stories, please share those with us. Um, if we apply to the community program, are we eligible to also apply for the community assistance fund? Um, and yes, yeah, so um, Danielle clarified for us earlier, you are allowed to, um, to apply for the emergency funding request once um, each calendar year or junior league year. All right. How long would the project chair need to have a seat on the board or advisory committee? The whole year. Okay, so regarding done in a day, is the idea that a JLD volunteer would fulfill their 60 hour volunteer hours in four to six hour shifts with one agency? No. So they are going, so this is going to be a series of concentrated projects with multiple different agencies. So the cool thing is that our volunteers are going to have the opportunity to work with multiple agencies and get to know um, more about our agencies in the community throughout this placement. So one agency may have a six hour shift um, and another agency may have a six hour shift and then the sum of those will equal their 60 hours for their placement throughout the year. How much can a new agency ask for the community project grant? You can ask for whatever you would like. Um, 
I would say, um, don't go like we're, we only have so much we can give. So keep that in mind. Um, but there is no limit on what you can request in the application. Okay, can done in a day substitute for community grant volunteers if we can offer at least 60 hours of one-off events for 10 or more people? No, um, we're not gonna have the capacity to um, devote that many hours to one agency in our done in a day program. So if you do need, if you have um, a need where you do need 60 hours of, um, of generally volunteers, time, then a, the better fit would be the community program for you. Okay, and Danielle, I'm going to defer to you on this one. If one of our programs is short on funding for an upcoming quarter, does that qualify for the emergency funding grants? Unfortunately, it does not because that's considered fundraising and that's one of the restrictions to the emergency funding grant. Yep, thank you. Okay, could we apply for multiple done in a day projects in one year since the application deadlines are quarterly? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna go over again, the three impact areas of focus for us. So just keep in mind, these are very broad. They're designed to be very broad because we, we want to um, help as many, as many areas as we can. So our uh, three impact areas are education and the arts, health and wellness, and strengthening families. Can JLD Community Project Grants fund a new salary position? We do offer um, funding for salaries. That is actually something fairly unique about our, uh, our grant um, application. So yes, we can offer funding for your um, for agency salaries. Do volunteers help in administrative offices? Um, like, can they help with computer skills, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what is the typical funding amount of a community program grant? It really varies on the need. So I would say at a minimum, um, we typically would offer 5,000, um, but we do offer more than that. So on average, I would say 10 to 15,000. Do you award partial funding if the grant request is too high? Yes, we do, absolutely. And then our last one, does the community project volunteer opportunity have to be in Dallas County? If there are volunteer opportunities, for example, in Denton County, would that be okay? So the request, it just has to, it doesn't necessarily have to be in Dallas County, but it has to be serving residents of Dallas County. So if you're, the only request is to serve residents of Denton County, that wouldn't necessarily qualify. Um, but if you do have, let's say you have two opportunities, um, one is to serve at your Dallas campus and one serves at your Denton campus, we could consider that. And similarly, if you have a situation, for example, if we're packing boxes and it happens to be that we're packing them at a facility in Denton County, but they're ultimately making their way back to Dallas County, that would certainly um, be eligible for consideration. Absolutely. Great questions. Yeah, these are great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that is that is the end of the Q&A. That's all we have. Um, it looks you, like you have another question. One more question came. You, okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, please explain more about salary funding. Is that for 501c3 only? Um, yes, so you must have your 501c3 letter in order to apply for any funding. Um, and what if I need a volunteer two to three times a week to work in the office? Um, that would need to be part of your um, placement description when you are applying for the um, community program. So that would be that could be a placement opportunity as long as throughout the year 
that um, placement would um, allow the volunteer to get 60 hours of uh, volunteer experience. All right. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at community at jldallas.org. And we'd be happy to review those, get it to the right person to answer your question for you. And again, we will be posting this presentation on our website um, so you can go back and reference it. And the applications for Done in a Day and R&D are live now. So you can start on those as soon as you'd like. Uh, please make sure you have uploaded them and submitted your documents no later than June 6th at 5 p.m. We will not be accepting applications after that deadline. That is a hard deadline. Um, all right, but thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, we've enjoyed getting to share a little bit about ourselves and the opportunities that we have to partner with all of you. Um, and with that, um, I will uh, I will let you all go. Thanks for joining. All right, thanks everyone. Great job, Laura. <laughs> thank you.